Hello everyone, this is Xiao Song Ma from Qatar Computing Research Institute, presenting our findings on accelerating graph random walk. This is joint work mainly between QCRI and Tsinghua University. It was led by our first author, Ke Yan, who spent a year here as a research intern starting right before COVID, and was unfortunately working from his hotel room for a large part of the year. Fortunately, the work has generated exciting results. First, a brief description of graph random walk. Its input includes a graph and a set of walkers placed at their starting vertices. During the walk, each walker walks around by randomly selecting an edge to follow. This lasts for a given number of steps or till given termination condition is met. Graph random walk forms the basis of many widely used algorithms today, such as DeepWalk and Notovec, which in turn have diverse applications from link prediction for use cases like recommendation, to graph neural networks, fake news mitigation, and epidemic study. Today, a major consumer of graph random walk results is graph embedding, typically running on GPUs due to its regular nature of performing matrix computation. The random walk computation feeding such embedding training with sample edges, on the other hand, is less regular, relatively heavy with integer operations, and requires large memory capacity. So it's typically done on the CPU side. With graphs getting larger and the GPUs getting further ahead in speed, random walk easily becomes a bottleneck. For example, a recent production system of Tencent reports that they reuse edge samples 10 times on the embedding side. The major challenge here is the random access is dominating the execution. With common graph processing tasks, such as BFS or shortest path, an active vertex usually traverses all its edges in one iteration. Random walks, however, follow a random single edge at a time. Existing systems, therefore, took for granted that with random walk comes random memory accesses. The common design is to process walkers in turn wherever they are. In this example, the green walker is at this vertex with three edges. It throws a dice and picks one, then updates its location to its new stop. Same thing for the other walkers. This leads to two things. First, there is high data dependency, so not only the accesses are random, we suffer from pointer chasing. Second, every time data are brought into the cache, we have the entire cache line whose common size of 64 bytes can hold 16 edges. With computation scheduled by walkers, it's highly unlikely any of the other 15 edges get to be used before the cache line is evicted, so most of the contents brought into cache are wasted. This table gives the read latency along the CPU memory hierarchy, where we can see sequential accesses are quite cheap even when we go to another NUMA node. Random reads, on the other hand, sees a sharp increase from L3 cache to the main memory. For pointer chasing, even L3 cache reads are expensive, and local or remote access are simply nightmares. With existing graph random walk systems, the major memory access types are exactly these undesirable cases. In this work, we found that random walk doesn't imply random memory accesses. Actually, there are plenty of temporal and spatial locality if we look carefully enough. The key insight is that vertices are not created equal. Here, we have the degree distribution of the largest real-world graph used in our evaluation from Yahoo with 700 million vertices. We sort them by degree and plot the average degree of each 1% group, confirming the well-known power law degree distribution. Though the average is only around 1,000, the degrees within the first few groups vary a lot, with the highest degree vertex having over 7 million edges. 
Meanwhile, half of the vertices have a degree under eight, and about half of those have only one or two edges. In graph random walk, the frequency of a vertex being visited is highly correlated with its degree, as shown by the red curve. This means that on the spectrum of vertices by their degree, we have extremely popular and crowded places on the left, like a traffic hub in Manhattan. On the right, we have the silent majority, places like the Himalayas, where a spot is visited once in a long while. Our new system, Flash Mob, is motivated by such disparity. With Flash Mob, we schedule random walk operations differently. We still have the whole graph in memory, but rather than following each walker wherever it goes, we cut our work units as vertex partitions, with the goal of fitting them into faster cache levels if possible. Each task will process one such partition. For example, here task 1 with one containing a few high-degree vertices. This task will then update all workers in that partition, each making one step. Task 2, on the other hand, has a partition with more vertices, each with only one edge, and therefore fewer walkers in total. This model creates an iterative process a bit like MapReduce, in that flash mob alternates between a sample stage and a shuffle stage, so that walkers get regrouped by their new locations after each step. Finally, we will later talk about an optimization problem whose solution allows us to perform automatic vertex partitioning to maximize performance. For the high-degree vertices, which host the majority of walkers, many strangers would happen to be on the same node, and we optimize by batching and pre-sampling PS. Rather than having each walker independently draw one edge at a time, we pre-sample many edges in advance to prepare for the large crowd. For example, this high-degree vertex VH has a long edge list, and during pre-sampling, we throw the dice for thousands of times, saving sampled edges in a pre-sampled edge buffer, which will be consumed sequentially by thousands of walkers. Due to the buffer space requirement, each vertex partition at the left end contains a small number of vertices. Obviously, such pre-sampling adds another round of computation, but that's completely justified. In the pre-sample stage, we do have to do random accesses, but this process focuses on one vertex at a time, where the edge list typically fits into the L2 or even L1 cache. In the walk stage, where the walker's locations get updated by following a sampled edge, the walkers access the pre-sampled edge buffer only in a streaming manner, bringing little wastage of cache line data. For the Himalayas on the right side, doing pre-sampling brings no benefit, as a vertex would be lucky to be visited at all, and we stay with direct sampling, DS. However, while we can't harvest sequentiality here, we find instead regularity. Recall that a huge number of low-degree vertices have a common degree. For example, this two-edge vertex VL has many two-degree companions. Flash mob packs them tightly, so here one vertex partition can hold many vertices. With each walker sampling for itself randomly, memory accesses are slower but there are fewer of them. First, there is no pre-sampling stage. Then, with uniform degree partitions, we get rid of the degree lookup forced by the common CSR data structure and can index to any edge with simple arithmetic, which reduces memory accesses by half. Finally, we fit more vertices in a partition containing all random accesses within a certain cache level if the partition is small enough. The hard problem here is where we should switch between these two different sampling strategies and how we should cut the spectrum into partitions 
which form the basic work unit for flash mob. We want such partitioning to be automatic, adaptive to the CPU architecture, resource configuration, and input graph. More specifically, we need to optimize in a 2D solution space. With four candidate partition sizes cut to fit the L1, L2, or L3 cache, or what we call DRAM size, as once it's beyond L3, it doesn't matter much. Here we illustrate the current Intel Skylake architecture designed to accommodate more data center and cloud executions. The major difference with prior designs is that each core has a quite spacious private L2 cache sized at one megabyte, which can pull data directly from DRAM. The shared L3 cache size is quite modest, but exclusive of L2. L1 remains tiny at 32 KB only. FlashMob sets its candidate partition sizes accordingly. On top of this, each partition needs to pick from two candidate sampling policies, PS, pre-sampling, or DS, direct sampling. Fortunately, we found this maps well to an existing optimization problem called MCKP, multi-choice knapsack. With MCKP, we have a set of items, each with a given weight and profit, partitioned into a certain number of classes. The goal is to select exactly one item from each class so that we maximize the total profit while satisfying a given total weight budget. This problem is NP-hard, but has a pseudo-polynomial dynamic programming solution. We approximate FlashMob's vertex partitioning and map it to MCKP. The main idea is that with this vertex array sorted in degree, we first cut it into large chunks that we call groups, so that within each group we have relatively consistent vertex degrees. Each group maps to an MCKP class. Within each group, we have uniform partitions with candidate sizes at L1, L2, L3, and DRAM levels. A partition can either go with PS or DS. Each partition size with its best sampling policy setting then becomes a candidate item in this class, whose weight is the number of partitions. Given the average degree, partition sizes, and sampling policy, FlashMob can look up its offline profiling results to find out the expected sampling performance, which defines a candidate item's profit. Note that such profiling is machine-dependent, but graph topology-independent, therefore a one-time effort that could be reused across different input graphs. Going through all the groups or classes, we come to solving this overall optimization problem. Here. The total weight budget is defined as the number of partitions that allow us to fit the shuffling tasks themselves within the L2 cache. Solving such a problem using dynamic programming costs under one second for our largest graph. More details are in the paper. In addition, FlashMob contains quite a few other optimizations. As mentioned earlier, its shuffling process is cache-friendly as well and we carefully fit each shuffling task into the L2 cache. It also adopts compact walker state storage, again to fit more vertices into a partition, as well as to accommodate more active walkers in DRAM to maximize cache data reuse. Finally, it is designed to be NUMA aware with two execution modes. With larger graphs, it recommends the partition mode where we split the graph data across NUMA nodes and make remote memory access strictly streaming. With smaller graphs, it might be more profitable to adopt the replication mode, where we have one copy of the entire graph on each NUMA node and perform independent walks simultaneously, making all memory accesses local. Again, please see details in the paper if you are interested. 
We evaluated a flash mob on the QCRI server with this configuration and compared it to two baselines, including our own Night King, a graph random walk engine, and graph beat, a graph embedding framework with CPU side random walk and GPU side training. We tested on these five real world graphs with very different sizes. Compared to Night King, the stronger of the two baselines, FlashMob is significantly faster on both of the walk algorithms evaluated, bringing a 4 to 20 times speed up. Again, due to time limit, we choose to show a performance highlight using three toy graphs designed to fit into L1, L2, and L3 caches, plus YouTube and Yahoo, the smallest and the largest graphs among those tested. With Night King, the per step walk time, shown in nanoseconds, keeps growing as the graph gets larger. With flash mob, on the other hand, the two real graphs with a three order of magnitude difference in size have much closer performance. And even with the 58 gigabyte Yahoo graph, its per step walk time beats Night King's with a five kilobyte toy dataset. In the paper, you can find detailed cache and memory profiling results. Finally, here we show the decisions made by the MCKP dynamic programming algorithm. For our five graphs, the algorithm limits the number of partitions to under 2K, which acts as a total weight budget, as this allows us to fit the shuffling tasks themselves into the L2 cache. The different color bars show the distribution of partition sizes. The YouTube graph, due to its small size, can afford to have smaller L1 size partitions and doesn't use up the weight budget. With other graphs, clearly, the L2 size partitions are favored, as its substantial size of one megabyte combined with its speed allow for efficient processing of the higher degree vertices. Oftentimes, L3 is skipped with the lower degree vertices chopped into larger DRAM size partitions. Now we look at the sampling policy dimension. Again, as expected, the MCKP solution chooses to do pre-sampling on the higher degree partitions and DS on the DRAM size lower degree ones. The exception is YouTube where with all small partitions, DS is actually faster everywhere. To summarize, the foremost takeaway from this work is that graph random walk is not as random as one might think, and we can create locality by a few tricks, partitioning, batching, reordering, and scheduling. As a result, all of our memory accesses are staying within the more pleasant areas in this latency table. Secondly, the table reminds us again that with today's CPU architecture, sequential accesses are much cheaper. This is reflected in flash mobs design, where we trade volume for speed and find that doing more scans often saves both time and actual memory traffic. Finally, we argue that old-fashioned white box optimization still works and provides a lightweight alternative to machine learning based system auto configuration. In our system, the one-time profiling takes around 200 seconds and the MCKP based optimization takes less than one second as compared to the much more time consuming random walks. FlashMob is open source and you can find evaluated artifact here on GitHub. Please give it a try. Thank you.